I grew up in two cultures, American and South Asian. Both have taught me some key lessons. The seminal one, they're my people and they're others. My people look like me, my people speak like me, my people live their lives like me, my people are citizens like me. I was born in America, which makes me American. My parents are from India, which makes some claim I'm Indian. I wear this turban, sport this beard, which identifies me as somebody who follows the Sikh religion. To many who do not know that religion, they claim to know my origin story better than I do. <laughs> and as a teenager, I got to see my birth certificate for the first time while getting my passport renewed, and I got to notice my race for the first time. According to the Department of Human Services in Washington, D.C., I'm white. I know what all of you are thinking. He's not white. <laughs> Apparently, white people have this skin color. And black people have this skin color. Race is one of the most incredible and also human-made stories we live in this world. And one of those incredible stories is a story of black and white people. A story that has been used to subjugate, kill, enslave millions of people across centuries. This is the power of stories behind labels and words we live by every day. Stories created out of our perceived differences. We are falling prey to the plots of these stories including me. As a young boy, I spent part of my childhood in India with my parents. And I remember some of my childhood friends referring to Africans as hapshis. Hapshi in my native tongue, Punjabi, means monkey. I knew this was not true, but I did not correct my friends. My loved ones and family to this day refer to babies as being beautiful, with special emphasis on their lighter skin tone. My father took out matrimonial ads for me without me knowing about them in newspapers, seeking fair-skinned women for me. Years later, as an adult, I was house hunting in New York City with my British-born and bred wife, who, by the way, I found on my own. <laughs> I confided in her that I did not want to live in predominantly black neighborhoods because I associated those neighborhoods with being unsafe, drug-prone, and less educated. My wife did not see black people with the same lens. As Providence would have it, we ended up finding our first home in Harlem. Not because I overcame my stereotypes, but because we could afford that home within our means. We live a few blocks from the home of the famed and beloved early 20th century American writer Ralph Ellison. His classic work is titled Invisible Man. I read this book in sophomore year in college while I was going through an intense identity crisis of my own. I'm an American, but everybody seemed to stare at me. Strangers took liberty to call me names. Genie, raghead, clown. Some even laughed on my face. I felt like an outsider at home. So I took off my turban, cut off my unshorn hair, shaved off my beard, and I spent the next decade trying to find my place in America, pursuing dreams, navigating different identities, trying to fit in, to become invisible. Eventually, I found my place after 10 years. I chose for the first time in my life to follow that religion I was born into, the Sikh religion, that I finally understood asks you to stand out for values it cherishes, equality, freedom, and justice. By now, I was living a few miles north and working a few miles north of New York City. The month was August, the year was 2001. We all know what happened on September the 11th, 2001. It was a tragedy that was to have a global impact. 
at home, it was one of our most vulnerable of moments. We felt grief, anger, anxiety, patriotism, and a sense of retribution. So we went to wars, abroad and here at home. Turbans, beards, and darker skin became new symbols of anti-Americanism. Brown people from Arab, Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, Hindu, and Hispanic backgrounds became targets of bigotry and intolerance. Some, like myself, have been told repeatedly for the last 20 years by fellow Americans, go back home. I've been called many, many names in those 20 years. That changed by the new cycle. My first response to this violence and actions and words is anger and frustration, a lot of it. But deep inside, I could relate to the feeling of fellow Americans who see in me the other. I spent part of my childhood in India with my parents, and there was a political conflict raging on between the Sikh ethnic minority and the Hindu majority state. Thousands were killed. On October 31st, 1984, following the assassination of the Indian Prime Minister by two Sikh bodyguards, a genocidal killing spree spread across cities in India. Sikhs were hunted by their turbans and long hair. Countless were burnt alive. We had a mob that came to our home on November 1st, 1984. We were some of the lucky ones to survive and escape death that day. In the aftermath of this genocidal massacre, I saw news headlines announcing the killing of Hindus at the hands of Sikh militants. As a young boy, I relished in the killing of fellow innocent humans. I realized my potential as a young boy to justify the pain and suffering of those I labeled as other. In the aftermath of the attacks of 9-11, weeks, months, years later, this realization was my guide. As six and fellow brown Americans were assaulted, arrested, driven off highways, and killed by fellow Americans just for looking like an outsider. In moments of fear, uncertainty, and vulnerability, we accentuate the otherness of fellow humans. We see them as unidimensional characters, not one of us, foreigners, maybe even the enemy. What we do in these tender moments of vulnerability is what gets to define us and our character. It's a struggle. It requires us to reflect and look in the mirror every day and take stock of our actions. It takes courage. Ten years ago, I had a vision of a new American superhero, one with a turban and beard, taking on intolerance and bigotry. I illustrated this superhero as Captain America. Fiona Aboud, a photographer based in New York City, spent almost a year trying to convince me to don the uniform of Captain America. I'm skinny, as you can see. I've been a perpetual outsider in the eyes of many. I did not want to stand out any more than I already do. On a beautiful summer day in June 2013, I stepped out as Captain America on the streets of New York City. I was nervous, sweaty palms, not knowing how fellow Americans were going to receive me. It turned out to be one of the most amazing days, or dare I say, mission of my life. I got hugs from strangers. NYPD officers took photos of me. I got access to an FDNY truck. I even 
God invited to a stranger's wedding. <laughs> This is the power of fictional stories. One moment stands out from that day. I was posing by this rock in Central Park, and this young boy, middle schooler, he saw me silently for 10 minutes. And he finally breaks the silence and goes, what are you doing? I'm Captain America for the day. No, you're not. Why not? Because you're not white. My birth certificate would have been great to whip out in that moment. <laughs> But I don't carry that with me all the time. I should. So I told the kid, listen, Captain America is a fictional character. He was created in 1941. We're in the 21st century. Captain America can be black, Hispanic, and even with a turban and beard. He thought for a moment and goes, black, yes, Hispanic, maybe, turban beards, no. This kid was being honest and authentic. He was transparent in his vulnerability to pervasive stereotypes in American culture. I parted ways with him by telling him, look, I'm not, I'm not offended by you or your words. But for the rest of your life, you're going to have this image of me, skinny, glasses, turban, beard, dressed up as Captain America, which you will never be able to voluntarily delete from your head. <laughs> This young American harbors the potential, like you, me, and everyone, to let shallow stereotypes, fictional narrative, and lack of awareness about each other's stories guide us into a world witness to rampant bias, prejudice, and racist acts. We need to create new stories that reflect our uniqueness and differences, not in opposition to each other, but as dynamic, ever-evolving selves working towards a better version of who we are. The choice is ours every day to manifest our bias self or our superhero self. Thank you.